Hi there, I'm Dr. Anthony Cliff, and in this episode, we're talking about impression management in your research interviews. So let's get to it. So what is impression management? Well, impression management refers to the conscious or unconscious strategies that individuals, i.e. researchers, use to influence how they are perceived by the interviewee. It involves presenting yourself in a way that aligns to that particular social norms of that particular setting or that particular subgroup. It's about the expectations. It's about the power that's at play. And basically, Impressive management is all about trying to reduce that power and reduce that bias between you as the interviewer and your interviewee in research. So why is it so important and why is it something we should consider when we're doing our interviews for our research? Well, impression management really can impact our validity and our reliability of our data when we're conducting our interviews. And it really is something that we should pay close attention to when we are considering how we set up those interviews, how we dress, where the location is. Because incorrect impression management might hinder your data collection. It might not provide the most accurate or honest responses, and it might be biased or offer incomplete data. Now, when it comes to impression management, today I'm going to talk about the four key things you should be thinking about when you are planning and setting up your particular interviews, because inherently in an interview setting, there is power and there is a power dynamic at play. And typically as a researcher, because you're coming in to discuss somebody's lives, you have the more perceived power than the interviewee does. So it's our job as a good researcher is to try and minimize that power dynamic to get down to being equals so that your participant is going to speak freely and as openly as possible. So firstly, let's have a consideration about the location and how powerful this can be in either helping you or hindering you in that kind of reducing that power dynamic between you and your participant. Think a little bit like football or any sport that has a home, a way or a neutral ground. A home ground, typically you might have heard of the home advantage, where that home team, it's their turf, they feel more comfortable. Away, going to an away fixture is typically more difficult because, again, you're going away from your home stadium to somebody else's stadium. Or think of it a little bit like a neutral ground where nobody technically should have an upper hand because it is a neutral venue. And that's kind of the same principle we're going to talk about now for setting up your interview. The concept of the home ground. What we mean by this is, is the participant is in their home their home place. Now that doesn't necessarily mean to be their home, although it can be, but it's typically where they have chosen to have the interview. So again, good interview practice where available is to allow your participants to choose where they would like to have that particular interview to take place. So is it in their home online or in person? Is it in their office space? Now this can have some really good benefits to you um, as a researcher. So primarily because it's their location and it's something that they have selected and chosen, they're probably the most comfortable in that space and the most relaxed. And when your participants are in that mindset and that state, they're more likely to offer up more information and be more freely in that discussion and help develop that rapport. From the interviewee's side, it reduces that power dynamic because, again, they hold the power, per se, being in their location, and you're having to enter their particular domain. So it's reducing your power, which, again, is something that we're trying to look for. And if you're trying to do something in terms of observations, again, if it's in an environment that you're working in, you're looking at, it allows you to kind of observe what goes on or how is that person living, what other contexts What's the setup that might be influencing what they're saying and how they're saying it? So it can be quite good in that. But there are some particular limitations. So the big one is they might not be open to speaking based on their location. So for convenience purposes, they might have said they wanted to meet at home, so therefore online. But you don't know who is in that room. You don't know who is outside those four walls. And again, Obviously, having worked through lockdown, for example, you know that family can hear your conversations when you're on Teams. So they might be limited in what they say. 
And vice versa, again, due to time commitments, if they elected to meet in their office, but you're asking questions about the office environment or the company that they work for, they might be hesitant in how they present that information to you. So consider that. There's a real lack of control for you as a researcher as well, because you don't know what the sound's going to be like in that particular location. You don't know if there's going to be general interruptions or if they're just trying to shoehorn you into your day. And again, because you're having to go to a particular location, there is a resource cost in terms of time um, and travel to consider as well. The away scenario here is where you're asking your participants to come away to a particular location of your choosing, which is typically a location which would be your home location that you are comfortable in, that you have set up, that you have control over. So why would we want to make our participant leave the comfort of their home ground, as it were, to come to an away venue? Well, for you as a researcher, the real big benefit of this is you have complete control over that particular setting. You have, you know what the sound's going to be like. You know how the room is set up. You know if you're going to have any interruptions, for example. And here, this is really, really beneficial in terms of impression management because... Are you going to have the tables and chairs out as a physical barrier? Are you going to remove those physical barriers, so it's just two chairs in the room? Is that going to help or hinder your participants' voice, your participants' comfort and rapport? Well, you have complete control over that, which is something that you wouldn't have by going to their home location. And as this kind of solves the issue of having that home location is by going away from that environment, they might be more freely and open to talk about that. If you're asking about work questions, then physically being away from that office space might allow them to be more open and to develop that more rapport and those truthful answers. And obviously for you, there's no travel involved per se because it's something that you're controlling. The real big issue, however, we're getting your participants to go to a physical location that's not their own, that you hold all the power. Your participant isn't really gaining or lessening that power in any way. So it's a bit of an effort. It's a bit of a chore on their part. And again, unless it is sensitive in terms of location, they might not really be as overt in their answers. They might not be as free forthcoming because, again, there is that power dynamic there. And there is a time, cost, and effort implication for your reader there, um, or for your interviewer, sorry, as you go through. So it is something to consider. Finally, we have the neutral venue. And this is where both yourself and the participant are meeting in a neutral location where you don't have power. There's no advantage of being at home or away. It's a neutral location, such as a cafe or a park. So again, Biggest benefit here is that reduced perceived power dynamic in terms of location, be that subconscious or conscious, it can have a real big play in that. It's potentially convenient for travel and admin for both of you to meet halfway in a particular location. And again, being away from particular locations might free up that discussion space to be more open and more honest about the issues that you're talking about. Conversely, however, on the other side of that coin, the con is because you're in that public space, people might not be as open knowing that people can hear your conversation. So have a consideration for that. Both of you will have to spend some time, cost and effort getting to that particular location. But the biggest issue really is the ethical consideration of doing this. Again, putting your participant in a place where they might not want to talk about something as openly in the general public. But when, if you are typically going to record these interviews, what do you do with those general conversations that get picked up on the dictaphone, on the microphone? What are you going to do about that? How are you going to cope with that from an ethical standpoint? So it's something to consider. The insider versus outsider approach to research is really important when it comes down to impression management. Not in this video, but in another video, we're going to talk through the pros and cons of being an insider versus an outsider. And all this means, basically, it's the position of you as a researcher in relation to the community or group you're studying. Do you identify as being one of them or are you from the outside? If you're going with the insider approach, so you're identifying as a member of part of that community and you want to reduce that power dynamic at play, 
you're probably best mimicking the style or the expectations of that subgroup of the population that you're looking at. So, for example, in the past when I, as a geoscience student originally, but I was doing research as a staff member with geoscience students, I didn't want to come into that interview in a suit and tie because that has perceived power dynamics. I dressed that I would with my fieldwork gear, which what the students would be wearing for their fieldwork to help lessen that power dynamic at play, identifying as one of them through the items of clothing that I wear, along as well with the other things that I talk about in relation to their power dynamic. If you want to maintain the outsider perspective, you want to mimic that through again, through the items of clothing that you wear. So for example, if you do want to perceive yourself as an outsider, as a researcher, and you want to keep that as part of your participants' mind, and again, there's pros and cons to doing this. If, for example, I say I was talking to those students, then yeah, I would dress more smart than I would for a typical fieldwork student. I would dress in a shirt and tie to, again, have that perceived thing that I am different to you. I am an outsider. Would you like a drink before the start of an interview? It's a nice question to ask. However, it can actually lead you to some potential bias issues in your research. By offering that simple question of offering a particular beverage, it might create an inadvertent power dynamic or a social expectation where that participant feels obliged to reciprocate and to do it in good faith and in favor. And this is a problem because if ethically you've allowed your participant to leave at any time, they might feel obliged to talk about things because you've bought them a coffee, for example. There is, of course, a practical element to consider here as well. Are they going to be distracted by that particular drink? They might be worried about spilling it and therefore not really focused on the particular questions that you've asked. But finally, a real key dynamic of offering this question is about consistency. If you do it for one person and not the others, again, this inconsistency might introduce that variability into your interview conditions and therefore potentially affect the comparability of that data. So it's imperative that if you are going to do this, that you're consistent. But consider the context that you're doing and make sure you're always maintaining professionalism. Because again, our job is trying to reduce that power dynamic and reduce the influence on our particular participants. So that's all you need to know about impression management before you do your research interviews. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like it, comment and subscribe. I do check my comments and please do check out the rest of the videos on this channel, all about research in higher education, both for undergrad, right the way through to PhD. Thanks everybody and see you on the next one.